Buenos dias. In the previous video, we walked through our first example of using a Carnot map to simplify a Boolean equation. Along the way, we explain the reasoning behind k-maps. In this video, we'll apply what we learned to a few more three-variable examples. In this first example, we are given a truth table and tasked with identifying the simplest SOP equation from it. To do this, we first draw a blank three-input k-map. x is listed across the rows, y and z are listed across the columns, and follow gray code. There are eight squares on the k-map, which matches with the eight rows of the truth table. Now we copy any output ones from the truth table to the corresponding square on the k-map. In the bottom row, a equals 1 and inputs x, y, z all equal 1. This leads to a 1 in this square. Notice that x equals 1, y equals 1, and z equals 1. The next output 1 we'll look at is here. In this case, x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals 1. Where is the corresponding square? We need to find the place where x equals 1 and y, z read 0, 1. This leads us to this square, so we fill in a 1. In a similar fashion, we fill in the remaining three 1s. These occur at input codes 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. As a double check, note that there are five ones in the truth table output column, which matches the five ones now present on the k-map. Now we circle the largest groups that are whole powers of two. There is a group of four in the center. There is a single one remaining. We want this in the largest possible group, so we include it in a group of two, like you see here. Now we identify the product term associated with each group. In this group of four, does x change values? Yes, it does. It is zero in the top half and one in the bottom half, so x drops out of the product term. Does y change values? Yes, it does. It is 0 in the left half and 1 in the right half. So y drops out of the product term. Does z change values? No. In every square in this group, z is always a 1. Therefore, the product term is simply z. In this group of 2, does x change values? No. It is always 0. Therefore, x prime is part of the product term. Does y change values? No, it is always 1. Therefore, y with no prime is part of the product term. Does z change values? Yes, it does. It is 1 in the left half and 0 in the right half, so z drops out. Therefore, the product term is x prime y. Lastly, we simply bring those product terms together into this SOP equation by placing the OR operator between them and setting it equal to the output variable. So A equals Z or X prime Y. Since we use the largest possible groups, we know we have the simplest possible equation. In this next example, we are given an equation rather than a truth table. Thankfully, this equation is in canonical SOP form, which makes it easy to transfer to the k-map. Each min term in the equation indicates one case in which the output equals 1. As usual, we begin by drawing a blank k-map. Then we look at the first min term, x, y prime, z prime. This will cause the output to equal 1 when x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals 0. Input code 100 leads us to this square on the k-map, where we write in a 1. The second midterm equals 1 when all of the input variables are 1. Input code 111 takes us to this square, and we fill in a 1. 
Lastly, the input code associated with this midterm is 110. So we write in a 1 at square 110. Three midterms in the equation leads to three ones on the k-map. There are actually two groups of two on this k-map. The first is in the bottom right. Pause the video and see if you can identify the product term for this group. The product term is xy. In both squares, x equals 1 and also y equals 1. z does change within the group, so it is not part of the product term. The next group of two takes advantage of the wraparound property of k-maps. Don't forget about that. And again, pause the video while you try to identify the associated product term. Here it is x z prime. In both squares, x equals 1. y does change between the squares, so it drops out. And in both squares, z equals 0, which is why z prime is part of the product term. As the last step, we simply write this final SOP equation. Now for one final example. Here we are given another function in canonical SOP form, but in the shorthand notation. Recall that in this notation, these numbers represent the various midterms being summed. Minterm 1 will have the input binary code that equals decimal 1, or 001. Thus, square 001 gets filled in on the k-map. Similarly, minterm 6 uses input code 110, so square 110 is filled in. Lastly, minterm 7 uses input code 111. We are able to use a group of two in the bottom right. This gives us the product term x, y. Unfortunately, this one up top is adjacent to no other ones. This means we must use the smallest possible group size. Pause the video and identify the product term for this tiny group. The product term is x prime, y prime, z. With a group size of 1, no input variable can change within the group, which means all three of them are present in the product term. This leads to a lengthier equation, but it is still accurate and as simple as possible. This table summarizes a key pattern that you may have noticed in these examples. The bigger the groups, the smaller the product terms, and thus the simpler the resulting equations. With a group size of 1, like we just saw in this example, all three of the input variables will be present. With a group size of 2, like in the bottom right on this map, then one of the inputs drops out, and the product term holds two variables. And with a group size of 4, like in the first example, then the product term is a super simple one variable. Keep in mind that all of these examples could also have been done by simplifying through the rules of Boolean algebra. Both k-maps and algebra produce the same results. You can use what works best for you in a given situation. After a little practice, most people prefer using Carnot maps. They usually lead to fewer mistakes. However, k-maps are typically limited to equations with three or four input variables. 5 and 6 are possible, but not discussed here. In the next video, we will work through some four input equations.